So today we're going to get started on installing the battens on my board and batten storage shed. What steps do we need to take to make this job go as smoothly as possible? What's the origin of this kind of siding and how is it supposed to work? Is there a right way and is there a wrong way to install the siding? Well, there's lots of different ways to install the siding, but as you can see here on my house, the board and batten siding was installed wrong. So when we get to that, we're going to have to address that issue, take all the siding down and put new stuff up and put it up properly. and welcome back to Retired for Life. So we're going to work on finishing off the siding on the storage shed by getting the battens in place. So let's talk just a little bit about board and batten before we get going on it. Now board and batten has been around for a really really long time and it has become a real favorite way for uh, DIYers to put siding up and I understand that that's what I'm doing because it can be a very nice looking and straightforward way to do it. But from my research on this type of siding, what I found was it was originally designed to work with green wood. So if you had access to a sawmill, you could cut your lumber and right off the sawmill, put it right up on the side of the house. And we'll go over how that works later on as we're putting these battens up. So there are lots of ways to install board and batten. Now I'm going to go more towards what I found out as being kind of a traditional way to put it up with a couple of tweaks that I like to throw in. I want to make sure that the building is weatherproof and I want to make sure it's going to last long and I want to make sure that it's easy to put up. So as you guys know, and I have mentioned this many times on the different projects that I'm working on here, I am not an expert on this. What I'm doing is sharing with you what I have found in my research and what I have found in the process of actually doing the job. So if you folks have got a better way to do it, a different way to do it, something that makes more sense, maybe there's a step I missed, let, it, let me know in the comments, share that with everybody. All right, let's get our equipment set up and we're gonna start measuring and cutting and get these things in place. So what I have found as an easier way to install this is I put the boards up first without staining or anything. And then when I've got all the boards up, I stain the boards. That way I can use the roller to do the job. And then, as you saw in the last video, I stain the batten separately and put them up. So the only thing I have to do is put a little bit of stain on the ends where the cuts are made to cut them to size. So let's have a quick look at the couple of things that I do that might be different from the way other people install board and batten. Now one of the things that I like to do, that I've learned about or felt that this is a good way to do it, is I put a batten all the way along the top. And that to me seems to give you a better kind of seal up against the uh, fascia boards. And then I put my battens on, butting up against that batten that's running horizontal. And the other thing that I do with battens, in this case at least, the bottom of the shed is up in the air. So what I like to do with my boards and with battens is cut an angle on the bottom of them coming away from the building. That way when the rain is coming down here, it's not gonna have a tendency to try to creep around and get in and stay at the bottom of the boards and possibly even sneak into the building. This will help the rain just drop away completely and not run back towards the building. So far, that seems to work really well. I haven't seen anybody else doing this, but to me, it just kind of makes sense. Now, from what I understand about board and battens, your battens are basically your clamps that help hold your boards in place. And I use deck screws to put them up. I've 
prefer that rather than putting nails. Nails would be a lot quicker, but I feel that uh, screws are much more secure. So you can see here when you're looking at these boards, there's no screws visible here anywhere along the boards because the boards are screwed down in place to the supporting structure underneath back behind the battens. And then when the battens go on, you can see the screws or nails there, but it's covering up a lot of the other holes that hold the boards in place, just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Although you do have to get pretty close to see that kind of thing. All right, enough about that. I've got one batten missing on this side because when I was doing this the last time, I didn't quite have enough lumber to do it, but I've got lots of lumber now. So let's get to work. We'll get that one batten in place and then start measuring for the top battens to go in. So we're starting out here with the uh, easy wall. Once I get these in, all of these battens are the same length. So we've got our top piece in now. We'll measure down, count how many we need, and then uh, cut them all in one go. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to the job. All right, folks, so to do that one side, I need uh, 18 battens at seven feet long, including the angle at the end. So I've got my batten sitting here. So what I'm gonna do is pick my uh, best end and cut my angle on the end and then measure and cut them to length after that. Now the angle doesn't really matter what you use because it's not mating with anything or anything like that. As long as it's coming out away from your wall. Now I usually use uh, 30 degrees and couldn't tell you why, it just seemed to work and it's easy to do on the saw. So we'll set the saw up at 30 degrees and get this angle cut on all of these. All right, let's get moving. All right, so there's my 30 degrees. I'll cut the end, the uh, best end of the board to the 30 degrees, keeping that uh, quite short. Make sure you get your little pieces out of there or they'll get caught on you. All right, folks, we got our first two battens up there. Everything's cut to length here, ready to go. So what I'm going to do is measure the distance between the two battens, make sure it's the same top and bottom, and also put my level on it to make sure things aren't going wonky level-wise. We want things to be going reasonably straight up and down. Of course, trying to use a piece of lumber as a straight edge is folly anyway. So we'll do the best we can and get these things up in place. Now to line this up to start with, what I'm doing is putting a magic marker mark, black magic marker, in the middle of the gap there. Being right at the top and being black on dark brown, it's not gonna show up very easily. All right, there's another four. Make sure we've got our 30 degree down, which we do. All right, let's get the top screw in these. Now 
There's about five and three quarters. Five and three quarters there. Oh boy. That is hot. All right, folks, there we are. I got this side completely done. You can see my 30 degree angle on the bottom. My piece all the way along at the top. Yeah, and the rain is coming in. All right, let's get in. We just made it. Well, there we go. We're rained out again. Can't seem to stay ahead of the rain. Well, we've got lots of rain coming down and it looks like that's gonna continue for a while, uh, probably a couple of days. So with that in mind, I think we're gonna end this video here. So we talked a bit about board and batten and its purpose. And we've talked about the way I'm cutting my battens and boards for installation. And we've uh, started getting a few in place. So we are making progress, which is good. But with a couple of days of rain coming, I think we're just going to cut this video short and uh, we will continue on again as soon as the weather clears up, which hopefully won't be too long. So don't forget if you've got any suggestions or thoughts or anything like that, or stuff you would like to share about how you do board and battens or whether you think what I'm doing makes any sense at all, Please leave a comment and share it with everybody. I'd love to hear from you. And I always get back to everybody that comments. So thanks very much for watching, folks. Remember to stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time.